Hello, uh, it's good to see you. Um, we are going to talk about upper and lower bounds. And these types of questions are usually packed in, in a word problem. And uh, my experience is, is that a lot of students find them quite confusing to answer. However, um, they're not, <laughs> if you understand what you're doing anyway. So what I want to do now is really to introduce in a few minutes time um, how you should look at problems like this and then in some other videos I will give you some practical examples. However, again, you can only do those practical examples if you understand the basics. Okay, now let's say they give me a number 4.5, yeah, 4.5 and they always tell me with these types of questions uh, um, to how many decimal places or to which number they have rounded it. And let's say they give the number 4.5 rounded to one decimal place. Yeah? So they say 4.5 and we rounded that already correct to one decimal place. And then you have to find the upper bound and the lower bound. Now, how you should approach questions like this is if I would just sketch a number line yeah, all right, so uh, that goes on and on and on up to infinity. And there in the middle, I'm gonna put 4.5, yeah, because that's the number we're talking about. And I'm just gonna put a few more of them. Now, considering we're talking about one decimal place, my next number is gonna be 4.6, and then 4.7, and over here, it's gonna be 4.4 indeed, 4.3. Now, Upper bound, lower bound. What are we talking about is, well, the lower bound, for instance, what is the smallest possible number that if you would round it to one decimal place is 4.5. Now, that number will be exactly between 4.4 and 4.5. So what lies exactly between 4.4 and 4.5, and if you draw that number line, it's perhaps easier for you to see. That is the number 4.45. That is going to be my lower bound. Yeah, so I'll write on top of that. That is the lower bound. That is the lowest possible number my number can be for it to become 4.5, correct to one decimal place. Because if I go to 4.44, if I would round that to one decimal place, so 4.44, let's just put that here, which is slightly smaller than 4.45, that would go to 4.4 to one decimal place and not to 4.5, yeah? So 4.45 is my lower bound. It's the smallest possible value my number can have that if I would round it to one decimal place, it becomes 4.5. Now, what is my upper bound? Well, my upper bound is that number, which is exactly between 4.5 and 4.6. Now, which number lies exactly between that? And I think you see it when you have the number line in front of you. Indeed, that is 4.55. Now, I know what you're saying now. Yeah, but hang on a minute. 4.55 would round up to 4.6, eh? correct, to one decimal place. You're absolutely right. However, we call that the upper bound. Okay, so that one is the upper bound. So that's basically the first value that wouldn't round to 4.5. Yeah, it's the upper bound. And if you would draw that on a number line, you could leave the circle open here, yeah, so it's not part of your values, a closed circle here, and then everything in between. But anyway, the lower bound, 4.45, the upper bound, 4.55. Now I'm going to give you two more examples so you understand. I already drew the number line here, um, but you, know, you can think of any number. Uh, for instance, let's say 161. 161, and they tell me it's corrected, corrected to the nearest unit, to the nearest unit, that's yeah? so the nearest whole number. All right. So I'm going to put my number 161 here in the middle nearest unit, so I'm just going to write a few more numbers down, 162, 163, yeah, 160, 159. Now what is the upper bound, what is the lower bound? The lower bound is going to be exactly over here and the upper bound is going to be exactly in the middle over there. So my lower bound 
what lies exactly between 160 and 161? That is indeed, that's 160.5 or 161 over two. That's my lower bound. It's the lowest possible value, yeah, I can have that if I would round it to the nearest unit, I'd get 161. Because even if I have the number 160.49999, yeah, which is almost the same as 160.5, just a little bit less, but even this value, if you would round it to the nearest unit, yeah, would go to 160, yeah, it will go down. So 160.5 is my lower bound. It's the first value that if you would round it, in this case, to the nearest unit, to the nearest whole number, will go up to 161. Well, my upper bound, yeah, perhaps in the meantime you already saw it, it's gonna be 161.5. You see that? All right, now one last example before we go to, let's say, word problems in the next video. Um, yeah, let's say 2.35, and they corrected that to the nearest, uh, or let's say to two decimal places, okay, 2DP. Yeah, so we've corrected the number 2.35 to two decimal places. What is the lower bound, what is the upper bound? Yeah, so they always give you the number and the accuracy, yeah, or to how many places they've corrected that. Okay, 2.35, I'm gonna put that in the middle. We're talking about two decimal places, so this is going to be 2.36, 2.37, eh? 2.38, 2.39, you can go on and on and on. Um, oh, let's just write a few, 2.34, 2.33, 3, 31. Anyway, lower bound, that's my number, 2.35, so my lower bound is exactly here, and my upper bound is exactly in the middle over there. So what is my lower bound? I'll write it down here. So my lower bound, the smallest possible number I can have if I would correct it to two decimal places, I get 2.35, is 2.345, 2.345. My upper bound, which is the highest possible value of actually the first value, doesn't become 2.35 anymore. That's going to be 2.355, 2.355. So have a look, make sure you understand why uh, it's 2.355, because why is that? Because it lies exactly between 2.35 and 2.36. And why is it 2.345? Because it's ex exactly between 2.34 and 2.3. Five. Anyway, that's the theory behind it. Let's go and have a look at how that translates into questions you can expect. Okay, I'll see you soon.